Hello, this is Clint Halstead, and this is an internet course called uh, Introduction to Microprocessors. We're using a textbook called Designing Embedded Systems with PIC Microcontrollers, Principles and Applications, Second Edition by Tim Wilmshurst. We're currently on section 5.4, Implementing Delays. So, to generate a time delay, uh, we need to use uh, we need to use the commands that we've learned previously, which is the uh, decrement and and s skip of zero or the decrement the skip of set command uh, so and then we want also we want to combine that with this whole idea of subroutines uh, in, in order to make the a nice little compact delay uh, section of code that we can reuse okay so Many times, you know, we want to, we have some things like LEDs or something that we want to flash slowly because inside the microprocessor, uh, things are happening, you know, around in the microseconds range, which is in the millionths of a second. And so that's happening so fast that once we interface with the real world sometimes, like with keypads and LEDs, many times we need to really have a delay if we're going to see a LED blinking we can't just turn it on and off as fast as we can because our eye is not going to be able to see that. Your eye can only see uh, variation changes uh, in the millisecond range, you know, 30 hertz, um, 60 hertz. Really, 30 hertz is about the max change your eye can see. 30 hertz means 30 times a second, and you can barely really see that. So, in a practical LED application, it would be more like half a second or a quarter of a second, that, that would be the quickest you would ever want to flash an LED. So we need to have a way of slowing down the processor inside the, when we want to sometimes interface with LEDs and things like that. So let's, let's go through a, kind of a, a flow, flow diagram of, of what a delay would look like. Typically you load some type of a counter and then you uh, put some no operation statement. So that's a statement that that's a new statement. We haven't really talked about that, but there's a, a statement called no op, and it just means uh, no operation. So it it looks like this no op. So that's an instruction uh, that we that we've just learned, and it just doesn't do anything. It's just it's, it's just used to give some some code because we need some dummy code there to to waste some time. So that's what the no op instruction does. So we'll have we'll do some padding. We'll add some things inside of the loop like no operation statements. Then we'll decrement a counter and then we'll compare. We'll see is the counter zero. Um, so we load this counter here. Then we put some no ops. We decrement this counter. We see if the counter is zero. If it's not, then we, we go to the top. Okay? So we can use, in order to do that, <coughs> we can use the statement or the instruction that we learned previously, which is um, the bit test instruction. The bit test f skip if uh, zero. Okay? So if it's zero, it's going to skip something. So that, this is a good instruction that we could use. And then this could be your counter. You just put counter here. Um, so here, and counter counter would just be a file register. So you could say here, uh, move uh, w to f counter, um, and then you'd have to have w loaded loaded with a value. So you have to say move. Uh, literal to W, you know, like maybe uh, if you want to do in, in a decimal, you could just say, you know, 200. So a value of 200 <coughs> would, would move that to your counter, and then you'd be good to go. Well, that's just, this is just an example. <coughs> so move literal to W, 200. Move W to F, counter, and then no op, bit test F, skip of zero, um, and you're testing counter. 
And then what you want to do is you want to say here, you want to say, um, you know, go to loop or something like that. So here you'd have to call this loop. So really you have to tab all this stuff over. All the stuff would really be tabbed over because you can't start typing in location zero in your text editor. You have to have, um, cause it, because it would anything in the, the first position becomes a label. And then of course here you'd have to have your um, yeah go to loop. So that would that would generate and then whenever it's zero, it's just gonna skip this and it's gonna go to your next instruction. So this would be just your next uh, your next instruction. So that's pretty much the way it works. Pretty simple to make a uh, delay. Oops. Okay, so let's look at another way to do it. Um, if you want to do a, a longer delay, so that give you one delay. If you want to do a nested delay, if you want to make your delay even longer, you can put a delay inside of a delay. The way you would do that is you'd have your first loop here. Uh, we could call this, and then you load your counter. You call your first delay routine, so it goes over here and counts 200 times. And when it, when it does that, then it decrements another counter, and then it's, it's called a nested delay. Okay, so um, <clears throat> yeah, we'll just call that a nested. Nested delay. And then this is just a, a single delay, a simple delay. We got delay, nested delay. And um, it, over here you got even a more complicated delay. You got a counter, loaded counter, load counter two, load counter one. You got some no ops, decrement a counter, is the counter zero? No, and then you just, you stay in this loop until you get this loop executed and this is this is basically doing a delay, a nested delay, because you got two you got two uh, bit tests, so you're you're evaluating something twice. You got evaluation here, and you're evaluating the counter here. So the, the difference between this and this over here is this is using subroutines. You're using the call subroutine. Uh, here to the nested delay. Over here, you're not using a call subroutine. You're just building it all into uh, your code, just uh, your main program code. Or you can make this entire thing a subroutine. But there's two different ways to do it. You got the sub the subroutine method to do it, and then you got the the right. I mean, sorry. This is the subroutine method, and then the non-subroutine method over here on the right. Uh, so two two different ways to uh, generate a, a timing delay. So it, here's kind of what I, I just typed out. I mean you got the you got a delay label, delay 5. You got the move literal to W uh, decimal 200. So we're going to load uh, just the, the number 200. Uh, remember the 250 Five is the maximum decimal value you can in a, hold in an 8-bit number. So just keep that in mind. You, you couldn't make this number here 300. That wouldn't work. So, you know, loading it with 300 wouldn't work. You can only go up to 255 for 8 bits. Um, <clears throat> so then you move uh, WF. So you basically move this, uh, if this is the W register, you're moving this value of 200 into the W register, and then you're with the next instruction move W to F um, delay counter. Then you're moving the 200 from the W register to the file. You have these uh, file registers. You get this different location memory called file register. And um, okay, so you'd have to declare where this file register was at. You know, is it location 20? So you have to declare. You'd have to declare it. 
you'd have to do an equate statement. Um, you have to use the, the equate assembler directive, okay, to uh, to set that up. <clears throat> so you would just do something like uh, delay counter one equate to uh, you know zero x twenty or something, and that would that would declare. And this has to be up in the very front of your code, the very top of your code, right there. And that's how you, and then it's going to move that to 200, and then there's going to be a no-op, and then a no-op, and then decrement F, so it's going to decrement this number, so it's going to decrement this from 200 to 199, uh, and then skip a zero, it's not going to be zero, so it's not going to skip, so it's going to go to delay one, this is going to do some no-ops, which are basically nothing. And then it's going to decrement this counter again. It's going to decrement from 199 to 198. And then it's going to, it's not going to be zero, so it's going to say decrement F, skip of zero. Well, it's not zero, so it doesn't skip it. So it goes, it just keeps looping inside of here until, you know, it gets to 197 and dot, 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 dot. And then until it gets to zero, when finally it gets to zero, it, it gets to this instruction, says decrement F, skip of zero. So if it's zero, it skips and goes to return. And it exits out of this and then goes to, to your main program. So that's the way that works. Okay? And then a nested subroutine, like we talked about before, uh, this is the nested subroutine, is you have this, you're going to be calling this delay 5. So you call this delay 5, so you're going to call this subroutine. So you have another subroutine. Um, called delay 500. This is going to be 500 milliseconds delay, where this one's only 5 milliseconds. Um, and each cycle takes 5 uh, for 800. For, we have an 800 kilohertz here uh, clock or oscillator. So and there's there's um, <clears throat> it takes uh, four oscillator cycles to equal one instruction, one instruction. So once you do the math for that, that gives you, uh, for this frequency, gives you five microseconds. Five microseconds. And then so you got you got five instructions here. You got, um, inside here you got one, two, three, uh, oh, I'm sorry, this, well this is, each one of these is one. This one, 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 and then the go to is two, so that gives you one, two, three, four, five. So let me just erase that. This is one, one, one. So each one of these takes one cycle. No op takes one cycle. Decrement uh, f skip a zero takes one cycle, and go to takes two cycles. So this is a total of four cycles. I'm sorry, five cycles times five microseconds. Uh, so five times five microseconds equals 25 microseconds, and then multiply it times 200. That gives you the five milliseconds. Then if you do it another 100 times, 5 milliseconds times 100 gives you 500 milliseconds. And remember, that's about half a second. 500 milliseconds is half of a second. So that's more along the range that our eyeball can see. You know, we can see that kind of a change in the second range. We just can't see uh, a microseconds range or barely milliseconds range. So this one, you know, moves literal to W, does the same thing, uh, it moves a different number and you have a different counter. So you have to declare another file register counter, you have to declare this other um, uh, delay control 2, and then you have to do an equate statement, and then you have to do, you know, like 0x, you know, 21 or something like that. De declare another uh, file register. And then you move uh, a number, a literal value, like 100, to that value, and then you, um, and then you nest your delay five inside of this with another decrement f skip of zero, but this time you're going to be decrementing uh, counter two. Okay. And also, yeah, you don't want to forget here. Uh, the one tells you that you're going to put the result back into the file register. 
if you put a zero here, you, it would, uh, it would. This is the destination bit. Don't remember this. Is, don't forget this is the destination bit. So if D is one, uh, it goes back to the file register. So it's going to decrement this uh, file register value here, 21. Um, so this is your file register location. It's going to decrement that. Your, this is going to have the value of 100. So this is the value you're going to be decrementing. So it's going to go, uh, you know, to 99, uh, then 98, until it gets down to zero. <clears throat> and then it says, you know, go to del 2. So it's just going to go to up here until it gets to zero. Once it gets to zero, it's going to skip this go to, and then it's just going to go to return. So it's just going to go back to your main program. So that's the way a basic delay subroutine works. Now I would recommend uh, trying to do ex exercise 5.1 which is in the textbook which I will go over this. I'll give the solutions to this and, and, and uh, once, once I give you the students an opportunity to work this on their own uh, I'll go over the solution to that in, using the MPLAB X simulator. Okay. So that's it for now, and thank you very much, and we'll see you for the next lesson.